Now, if you're watching this video, it's probably because you've seen this tweet. A security researcher named Evil Socket, a guy named Simone or Simon, claims to have had a 9.9 .9 CVSS in all Linux distributions. And it has to do apparently with printers. Now, I, I hate printers, needs more science, whatever it is. Um, in this video, we're gonna talk about the nature of the vulnerability, what Simon actually did find, and whether or not the bug is overhyped. Now, I wanna kind of preface this before we get too deep into the video. Simon is getting a lot of flack online for tweeting this, that it's going to be a 9.9, .9, and then ultimately the bugs not being 9.9. .9. They are still really, really good bugs, so please like give the guy credit for doing the research in the first place, and don't shit on him on Twitter, I guess. So this all kind of started when uh, Simone dropped this tweet, right? You've probably seen this tweet. He said, hey, basically, I'm working on full disclosure in two weeks. No CVE assigned. All versions of Linux, effectively, including Mac in some cases, are vulnerable with a 9.9 .9 CVSS. And again, they even showed a screenshot here of the rate that gives them the 9.9 .9. network, low complexity, no privileges, no user interaction. So people are like, oh my God, this is like really, really bad. Now there was a lot of speculation as to where this was in the Linux kernel. No one really knew what to do. They were kind of waiting for, for Simon to drop his release. And then a couple things got leaked. Uh, first of all, if you went to the open printing cups browser D uh, issue list on GitHub, we see Evil Socket having a bit of a, a bit of an argument with one of the maintainers here. Uh, are you for real, man? Do you think people are stupid regarding a, a multi-thread implementation within the, the daemon? And then somehow, unfortunately, the uh, the entire release that he gave, the entire disclosure, got leaked. Now this document here is the markdown file of the disclosure that Simone gave to the organization that he was reporting it to. I think it was called Vince or something like that. It's another one of the CVE disclosure organizations. And this ultimately got leaked, right? So this is the entire vulnerability, how to replicate it, what it does. And so when this got leaked, Simone released his uh, his blog post. I'm not going to read this in depth. I want to go over kind of the highlights, talk about what the vulnerabilities actually are, and talk about how while they're not 9.9 .9 remote RCE CVEs, they are serious, right? Like this, this is a serious bug. And actually at the end of the video, I'll show you that my current Linux distribution that I run when I do my, my job during the day is vulnerable to this attack right now. Like someone could use this on me. It just wouldn't be a zero click exploit. We'll talk about it. Uh, so these are the four affected systems. You have basically cups, browse D, which we'll talk about what it is in a minute, uh, lib cup filters, lib PPD, and then cups filters. These are all components of the printing system within Linux, right? So what we'll find out in a couple minutes here is that cups browse D is a daemon that listens on this port UDP 361 one, and it trusts any packet to advertise itself as a printer. By advertising yourself as a printer, you can take advantage of these other vulnerabilities to do an arbitrary command injection on the target system. The reason that's such a big deal is, is a few things. One, anybody can do this to a remote toast, and then also it, it's a command injection. So if it were like a buffer overflow or some kind of heap overflow, you would have to know the values required to match the right offsets to maintain meaningful code control to do your evil bidding. The fact that it's a command execution means that the ultimate payload you have to send is not very sophisticated, and you can copy and paste it across all the, no, the target vulnerable versions without having to do a lot of work. It all, it all kind of just works. You will see this weird Fumatic rip command line here. This will be an interesting piece of conversation in this video. Um, I thought this was something that Simon made when he was making this bug, but this is actually a, a known feature, feature in quotes, uh, of the cups filter D daemon. But we'll, we'll go into that here in a second. So, so what is the actual bug here? So basically, the entry point for attack is if you have a version of Cups Browse D running on port 361 that is exposed to the internet or is exposed locally in your network, right? Basically, you're, you're, you're open to attack from anybody that can touch this port. Now, I do think personally, Simone may have overhyped how much you know was publicly on the internet. I know he said he was scanning the internet for 200 to 300,000 concurrent devices. There's a lot of speculation as to how accurate that is because Shodan.io, the public scanning internet uh, website, doesn't show all of these. But either way, if you can touch a host that's running Cups Browse D, but which by default it is on my computer right now. Uh, if you can touch this port, you are vulnerable to this. Now, the way that it works is by being open on this port. Effectively, the way that printers work is they emit this packet over IPP, the inter internet printing protocol, IPP on, on port 631, and it's trying to have all the printers broadcast to this service cups browse D where the printers are. It says, hi, I'm a printer, hi, I'm a printer. And the problem here is that it binds to 
in adder any so zero 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 on that port and will accept a connection by default from anyone so simone does highlight here that you can change in the comp file to not allow every ip address to advertise themselves as a printer but by default and like kind of rightfully so by like the nature of how printing has to work you know you're not going to know the default ip address of your printer it's kind of hard to to, to, to configure um, the default configuration file allows anybody to advertise themselves as a printer. Now, Simone does go into a little bit of, uh, of buffer overflow magic. This doesn't actually matter for his vulnerability at the end of the day, but this is the code that they use to parse out the URL from this advertisement of a printer, which is really crazy. And he actually fuzzed it, which is when you effectively scream at code to see what happens to it. Uh, and he found five crashes and I think as little as a 10 minute fuzzing session. So this had never been fuzzed before and he fuzzed it and found five bugs. So first of all, claps for, for Simon, I'm gonna fuck your name up like a hundred times in this video, dude. I'm sorry. Claps for him for finding this bug or these these bugs. But this is actually irrelevant to the 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 story here, despite all of these things, right? So again, the whole point of this system is you can advertise to port 631 that you are a printer. The way you literally do it, and I'll show it here towards the end of the video, how to do this, is you advertise via this string here to UDP port 631 that hi. I am a printer and now the computer will actually reach out to that printer and the request will look like this and it will say, oh, you're a printer. Can you please talk to me and tell me your specifications? And in doing that, it'll actually leak the kernel version and the architecture and then the IPP protocol version and the daemon protocol version of that system. So that's already a huge information disclosure. So you can go and hit any port that is listening on port, uh, any service that has uh, cups browse D open on 631, and then you can just leak this information. And it's not like super sensitive, but it does help an attacker get more information about the target system, right? So yeah, holy shit, it connected back immediately and gave the exact kernel version. So that's not great. So now what's happening is he's able to masquerade onto the other system as a printer. He's like, look at me, I'm a printer. I don't print, I need more cyan, rah, rah, rah. And so he's able to say right here, look, I'm a printer. I'm not actually a printer, but I've, I've tricked this other computer into thinking that I have a printer and its location is in your butt. Pretty crazy. Now, what printers need to do at this point is they need to emit this thing. It's called PPD, Postscript Printer Description. And what that does is it, it describes to the system the functionality of that printer, right? So all it's gonna do is be like, hey, I can do 10 pages per second, I speak English, and I also print color, rah, rah, rah. And so there are all these different things you can specify in that file. And remember, at this point, the attacker is controlling this file because the attacker said they're a printer, it's gonna call out to that printer and the printer is going to send this data, which is now attacker controlled. And this is where things get really, really crazy, okay? So you can actually specify in this file that you now control, this property called cups filter two. Now what cups filter two, it's meant to be this way that when the daemon receives data from the printer during a print job, maybe you have to convert one file format to another. Maybe you need to convert one character set to another. So you can implement your own custom filtering process to make something happen when you receive a print job. And so these cups filter to pro, uh, protocols, the way that it works is you say the type from the source, the type from the destination, the metric or the cost it takes to run that, but then a specific program that you have to run to, to convert this data. And so you're probably getting the gist of what's going on here, right? The cups filter two can be specified in this attacker controlled file. And through that, I can specify an arbitrary program to run. Oh, well, you know, luckily, the filter is any executable contained in the user lib cups filter path. Ah, crap. Well, unfortunately, because of that, we can't run any arbitrary program. We can only run ones that are inside this path. Wait a minute. There is one filter program that you're able to specify that actually completely bypasses this. It is called Fumatic Rip Command Line. And I was actually talking to Simone about this in Twitter DMs. I, I don't know why this exists. I could not tell you what 
Fematic Rip is. I could not tell you why it exists, but it has been the subject of many vulnerabilities since 2011, and it kind of just has to exist. People even who maintain this project say, it is very difficult to limit what can be provided in Fematic Rip command line in the PPD file. Redacted and the rest of Open Printing team have been talking about ways to limit what can be done through it, but they're afraid of breaking existing drivers. So, ultimately what you have to do to make this whole thing work is advertise yourself as a printer in your PPD file, say that you have to run Fumatic Grip command line as one of your cups filters, and then when you're converting PDFs to some other PostScript file, run a Fumatic Grip where the Fumatic Grip command line is arbitrary command, and that command will run. And it is crazy. I'm gonna let Simon's video run here. So he's gonna run his little script. Right now you'll see that he does not have uh, a file in temp. He's gonna run his script. I'm gonna fast forward here a little bit. And then eventually he does have I am vulnerable in the script, right? So I do wanna make a couple notes here. First of all, there are a few issues with this bug in the way it was presented. For this to happen, you do need to not only advertise that you're a printer, but then the person you're attacking needs to use you as a printer for your Fomatic rip command line to run. So is it a zero click RCE where I just advertise as a printer and boom, there goes the dynamite? No, that is not the case. However, you are able to overwrite the, the names of other printers like HP Office Desk 88650 or whatever, or you can make your own printer that's named print to PDF that I, if I wasn't looking at it close enough, would probably click on and just be like, oh, print to PDF, and then it would run the foo, the foo rip command, uh, command line. And then also a few more things like the issue with the 9.9 .9 CVSS, like Simone advertised this to Vince, which I guess, I don't know the nature of this organization. I guess it's another report where you can, or another place where you can get CVSS scores reported. Um, they gave this one to him a 9.9. .9. He's an excited security researcher. He tweeted about having a 9.9. .9. That obviously got him a little bit of blowback. Now for all those people saying, oh, it's not a big deal, rah, rah, rah. Like, no, it's, it's a big deal. Uh, granted, you have to have access to the port 631 on this computer for it to happen, but I will say that I just have a version of Ubuntu running right now that I use for videos on, on this channel, and we are going to show that we are actively listening on that port right now, right? So we see that uh, Cups Browse D is listening on port 3, 631. I'm gonna try to zoom out a little bit. Yep, so I, I actively am listening on that port, and even better, I'll do you one better. I'm gonna show you how I can advertise to my local computer that I am a printer, even though I am not. And we'll say, hey there, I'm a printer. And then, boom, over here on the other side, I get this connection that advertises the you know version of my kernel, and then here I can specify that PPD file, which would trigger the command injection when I go to print a file. So it's, it's not a nothing burger. It's not as big as Simone advertised it to be, but to be fair, he advertised it to be that way because he got told it was a 9.9. .9. He's a security researcher. He wanted to show off the bug that he found. Unfortunately, he got, he got miscommunicated too. That being said, really, really cool bug, really, really interesting work by Simone. Go show him some love, go hit his socials up, go follow him on Twitter, go read this article, and uh, go, give him, go, give, go give this a good read. This is a really good, I think a stream of consciousness way of seeing like where his head was at. And what's cool about this too is that like he was literally just turning on a new laptop that he got and he saw that his printers auto populated and he's like, that, that isn't right. How the hell does that work? And he found like four zero days. To me, this is like peak security research. Like you think something is weird, you go look into it, it is weird, you find bugs. Really, really cool. Anyway, that's it guys, thanks for watching, I appreciate it. If you're into this kind of stuff, hit subscribe and then go check out this video that I think you'll also enjoy as much as you did this one. Printer sucks, see you later, goodbye.